god, come on in! I'm so excited you're here. He's getting ready, and he's gonna be thrilled to see you. Come on, honey. All right. I'm ready. Ready. I'm gonna be right there as you wake up, okay? I'm so excited. <laughs> How did you guys meet? Well, I actually met Kevin in 2011 uh, while on a holiday trip in Mexico City. Huh? I was actually gathering some research for a book I was working on and um, suddenly here he comes. This handsome man asking for directions. <laughs> the rest is history. Did you notice his accent? Not immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's so innocent and he's so cute. But I, I actually thought he was a local because he was speaking to me with Spanish accent. Oh my God, when I see those innocent, beautiful green eyes and that intoxicating smile of his, it's, it, it takes me back to Mexico. It takes me back to that day. He's amazing. He's such a, a wonderful person. And I am so lucky to have him as a partner in life. He's so sweet. I am so blessed. Oh, he was a sweet boy. He had a, a normal childhood that any only child would have, I would, I would guess. Um, the year of the incident was pretty terrible, though. When, uh, when Kevin was three, we went camping, and, and his mother passed away. Uh, it was dark. Uh, she went out to go pee and never came back. Now, I'd, I'd like to think that she's out there somewhere um, and just didn't want to be a mother and wife anymore. But it's, it's hard not to believe that she wasn't mauled and eaten by a bear. They, um, they found a finger. Uh, a, a couple of weeks later, I took Kevin to see the uh, USA men's national team practice. Uh, he was so excited. He loved soccer so much. His favorite player was Alexei Lalas. Mm -hmm. Just because he looks so fucking stupid and kids love that shit. Anyways, uh, we weren't paying attention uh, to what was going on. Lalas kicked the ball out of bounds and Kevin was standing on the line out of bounds, and boom, Kevin was out cold. I thought he was dead. We rushed him to the hospital, uh, and he woke up. He really wasn't speaking clearly at that age, so no one really noticed anything was uh, off until he was five or six or so. Uh, and then, you know, it just didn't stop. Alexei is still not apologized. Shit, I met Kevin back in like, kindergarten and uh, I remember he moved down five houses down from me and uh, my mom said there's this little English boy I think who wants to talk to you you know we went outside we played that was it we, we've been boys ever since eventually you know I, I went on to ask him about it why he was doing it and um, you know he told me about the accident he had a concussion that was for sure uh, we spent a day in a hospital nothing really seemed off uh, no one really noticed anything was wrong. Um, and then Monty Python happened. Did John tell you about Monty Python? I was watching Monty Python and the Holy Grail, and Kevin turns to me and says, Daddy, why does a man have no arms and no legs? Daddy, why does that man have no arms and no legs? I froze dead in my tracks. I paused the movie, and I asked him to repeat that. So I had no idea what I had said or why, and he asked me to repeat it, and this time it came out in a, uh, how you say, French accent. <laughs> Daddy, why does a man have no arms and no legs? I thought he was messing with me. It turns out he wasn't. 
I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. Um, my dad started to get upset and said I was talking funny. He said to stop it, and I said, Dad, I have no idea what you're talking about. So, after two days of Kevin constantly changing his accent, I knew something was wrong. Yeah, so I know it happened now, uh, but I can't control the ac accent, and I have no idea what will come out at any time. So, we, uh, we went to doctor after doctor, test after test. Uh, could find nothing wrong. Doctors would pull me aside and say he was just making it up. It made me furious. Yeah, he was a... Uh... He was still getting tests when I first met him. I mean, I, I didn't care. I mean, from day one, I thought, uh, I still think to this day, actually, it's pretty fucking cool. Well, after three or four years, Kevin got tired of trying to find a cure. Uh, and he was just going to accept that he would always speak with an accent. Were you proud of him? Oh, I was totally proud of him. Uh, that was tough for an eight-year-old. Uh, and, and, and Danny was a big help. Danny always had his back. Danny was like a second son to me. It was definitely tough. Kids would pick on him about it all the time. But you know, I mean, I know Kevin, so I had his back. Kids didn't want to mess with me, so. As a kid, I was always getting beaten up by other kids. And me and Danny, we used to get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, you know, but when you, when you find out it's an actual, you know, affliction, then yeah, people, people let it go. Um, but there's always that one guy who just can't, who takes it personally. Yeah, I knew that dude. Went to school with him. Used to kick the shit out of him all the time. Used to walk around acting like he knew how to speak a different language, like, ho ho ho, blah 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 blah. Fuck it. He didn't know shit. Fuck that guy. So now here we are, 22 years later, and Dr. Benson. I met Dr. Benson um, at this wellness retreat back in the Rocky Mountains because I actually do yoga on the side. Doesn't practice real medicine um, and thinks that most diseases are fake and manifested by the mind. Yeah, they, they found some Yahoo who says people are idiots for like believing in gluten free or gluten diseases or something like that and now they eat cheese. And he said, I can cure him. Oh, of course I was skeptical. I mean, who is this fucking Looney Tune trying to swindle my son and his wife out of their money? Well, Dr. Benson sent his recommendations, and Kevin and I did a little bit of research, and, um, you know, we thought it's worth a shot. Right? Yeah, you know, when I first met uh, Mrs. Stack, I, I, I didn't care when she told me her story. I, I didn't care. But Richard kind of breathed new life into me after telling him the story. You know, it, 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 it kind of, I felt bad, so I know I could help him, so I just changed my mind, I guess. Oh yeah, he's, he's just wonderful. We met on the same retreat I met Mrs. Stackon on, and uh, ever since then it was like, <laughs> it was like fireworks. Once I got into the clinic and, and my residency, I had, I butted heads with all the senior doctors all the time. So, you know, after that, as soon as I, after I got out, I just decided that I'd open my own practice. You know, people would come in with just the stupidest things. And I just got so sick of it. Like people weren't trying to help themselves. <laughs> you know, this one woman comes in and she says, I've got cancer. And so we do all these tests on it. We did, we did a Rorschach test on her, you know, ridiculous. But so we do these tests, end of the day, she doesn't have, she's got nothing. She's perfectly fine, all right? Well, that was the end of it. She, oddly enough, she died three days later, hit by a bus. Served her right. Yeah, so that's why, you know, I, I got out of the practice and, and, and I became a wellness instructor. And, you know, I teach people, you know, how to take care of everything inside of them and around them and everything. And, and here we are. What else you want to know? So here it is in a nutshell. 
when Kevin got hit in the head, it knocked something loose that basically put his speech pattern in a never-ending cycle of accents. Basically, if he hears an accent, it automatically stays in his brain, and then he just continuously speaks. So however many people he's ever met in his lifetime, that's how many accents he has in his life. Uh, so what I'll basically do is I'll go in and I'll take a little instrument. I mean, I, have, I do have real stuff still. <laughs> I'll go in there and I'll mix around his little brain jelly and I'll get them all nice and neat again and then he'll be fine and then everything will go back to normal. Such a genius. Now, obviously, it's a little different because I'll have the real procedure, but as long as this goes smoothly, uh, he should have a normal speech pattern. He should speak as if he was speaking with a normal tone his entire life. And what happens if it goes wrong? <laughs> well, then he'll be brain dead. But that's not going to happen because you're the best. Oh, thanks. Uh, mm. Hey! I told you! Yep, today's the day. Uh, all in all, about three hours. Uh, when Kevin gets in, it'll be about, you know, a half hour to get him ready and prepped, and then procedure's about a half hour, we'll put him down. He'll wake up about an hour later, should be pretty good to go. Uh, we'll have him walk out and see his family, and he won't be able to talk immediately, but as soon as he gets to his family, it should, should write itself at that point. Or he'll be dead. So let's uh, hope for the best, huh? How are you feeling right now? Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Yeah, you think everything's gonna be okay though? It has to, right? You think he's gonna be alright? You think he's gonna be successful in the surgery? Yeah, I really do. So, I think it's all gonna work out fine. I'm, uh, I'm hoping for the best. Yeah? Yeah, I'm just a little uncomfortable, that's all. I, he, he's gonna make it. He's gonna make it? He's gonna make it. Yeah? Yes. It's one of these things where, like, you just, you just, you get used to something, and then you get a chance to make a change. Yeah. And, and, and you kind of you get you get your hopes up. Is he if, if he if the accent is still there? Are you are you gonna be upset about it? He's my son. I'm gonna love him either way. Okay. Sorry, Kevin. You didn't make it. Welcome to heaven. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. You're great. Don't move. We gotta get your vocal transmitters going, so we're gonna sit you up very slowly. You're good to go. Everything went great. Let's sit up really quick. Don't talk, just stand up. We dressed you up, you're good to go. So we're gonna keep it quiet until we get out there, and then when we get out there, you'll see all your friends and family came to see you, and then you can talk, and hopefully everything worked out. So come on out, Let's, we're gonna head out this way. going. Get down here. Come see him, guys. All right. So the procedure was a success, obviously. Uh, well, let's try it out, though. Let's take it easy, all right? Oh, sweet. He's not brain dead. <laughs> no, not brain dead. Well, I hope he's not brain dead. Let's try it out, alright? So, real slow. Repeat after me. Good eye, Mike. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. <coughs> Good eye. <laughs> Take it easy. Good eye, mate. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. Shrimp on the barbie. Shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> So, if you want to really take it easy, all right? Yeah. Don't do anything that would get you, you know, hit you. Hey, Kevin! <laughs> Let's go home, honey. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. All right, get out of here, Richard. Hey, Danny. Good to meet you, Mr. Stack. Thank you hey, so Danny. much. Of course, my pleasure. Hey, guys. <laughs> All right, well, remember, please take it easy, Kevin. You know, just talk <coughs> slowly. Don't worry about 
Don't come back slowly, but just take it easy. That's all you got. You're going to be great. Thank you, Doc. Oh, of course. My pleasure. Take care of yourself, okay? Okay. Oh! Ay, perdón. Es que me llevo la chingada. Wait. Ay, mi amor, es que me pego la cabeza. 